So the doctor faces the eaters of light here on BBC One tomorrow at the earlier than usual time of 6.45. Now with some strong language, Adol Ray has news for us. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Adol Ray. In the news this week, in Surrey, one man reluctantly heeds the call to serve the nation in Theresa May's government. <laughs> As the mayor of Watford drives into work, he's berated by an angry resident who's been campaigning against badly placed street signage. Footage has emerged from Pippa Middleton's wedding, which reveals that it was unwise of her to sneak away from the reception for a quiet lie down. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a very funny comedian, but more importantly, he's another non white face. <laughs> well, it's the end of the series, and the show was a bit down on its <laughs> diversity quotas. <laughs> Please welcome Phil Wang. And with Paul tonight, a Labour MP who said after last week's election, it's clear the Tories are the losers. And they were, except in terms of vote share, number of seats and who won the election. <laughs> Please welcome Angela Eagle MP. <laughs> and we start with Ian and Phil. Take a look at this. Oh, that's the Theresa May leaving the country. <laughs> That's the head of the unionists. Michael Gove at the doghouse. Yep, and back in again. Uh, Jeremy Corbyn having his cake and eating it. <laughs> <laughs> well, this must be the, the humiliating victory of the Tories. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> who, who I believe are still in power, but by the time of the repeat, they probably aren't. Um, <laughs> they're trying to stitch up a deal. Or form a coalition, as I think it's, it's formally known. <laughs> it's, it's quite a complex process. You go in with a big bag of money and you say, would you like it? And they say, <laughs> they say, no, we'd like some more. Uh, and this takes days. Um, but it, it may well be over. Is it over? No, it's not over. It's not they've, over uh, good? They've said it's an ongoing thing. They've set the date of the Queen's speech. Meanwhile, the DUP, who, let's face it, are the Wahhabists of Protestantism, aren't they? <laughs> is imagine, that right? Is that, is that factually correct? Yeah, they that's are. absolutely yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, I am your average socially liberal, lesbian, feminist... Vegetarian, humanist, who's in a civil partnership with a Catholic. And obviously, I'm looking forward to this DUP alliance <laughs> with a great deal. <laughs> they're, not the, they're not the only ones who tried to done a deal with the DUP, are they? I mean, Labour had a bit of a go. Gordon Brown was quite keen. We had a little word, but you the had a little word, was, didn't you? It was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just checking there's no humbug involved in this. <laughs> well, but the Queen's speech has been delayed. Um, the first days. time in history. Yes, and the Queen's going to miss Ascot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Proper sympathy at this time. She was favoured to win the 3.30 at <laughs> <laughs> You know, they're going to have to ditch so much of the manifesto. I don't think the Queen's speech is going to last very long. It'll just be about her royal visits this year. And well, of course, I mean, which ones are they? Well, Trump's not coming anymore, is he? So... <laughs> no, I, See, I, I, politician. I think he should come. I, he's spoiling our fun. Yeah. <laughs> the world's clown should come and see us. <laughs> <laughs> we can laugh as much as anybody else. <laughs> now, whatever the deal is, we mm. mustn't call it a coalition, apparently. What, why is that? Well, the Tories said that if, if people didn't vote for them, there'd be a coalition of chaos. And alliteration is one of the things you've really got to watch out for. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the, the, the idea of calling it a coalition, it upset 
one Tory MP by the name of Robert Sims, as you can see from this Twitter exchange. Mm. Uh, this is from You Little Quilt on Twitter. It says, Sinn Féin are saying that the Tories are in breach of the Good Friday Agreement by forming a coalition with the DUP. And they're right, too. And here's Robert Sims' reply. It's not a coalition, you dick. <laughs> OK, uh, talking of leaders, so yes. um, Arlene Foster. Yes. Look familiar to anyone? Yes, I was... I, I've had taken that legal proceedings, in fact, <laughs> uh, because of the current issue of private eyes. They've compared uh, the leader of the DUP to a much-beloved uh, family entertainer. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> There's very little similarity, and it's barely libelous. <laughs> I sued you once. Did yeah. you? Did yeah. you win? Yeah. As though, as though I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Was the settlement a year subscription to private art? <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that we know about the DUP... They're against evolution. They're biblical literalists. Now, one of their early slogans, save Ulster from sodomy. Yep. <laughs> it's no worse than strong and stable, come on. <laughs> Helpfully, someone on Twitter called Pearly Queen tweeted this. If you're wondering who the DUP are, their manifesto is basically the Old Testament Bible with fortnightly <laughs> bin collections. <laughs> DUP is actually the noise you make when you Google the DUP. Doop! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Theresa May has learned her lesson about how she presents herself, hasn't she? She wouldn't do that slightly annoying thing of not answering a question and just repeating the same phrases over and over, would she? No. I'm pleased that people from across the party have agreed to serve in my cabinet and we're going to be getting on with the job of government. A cabinet that will get on with the job of government, bringing that talent together to ensure that we can get on with the job. But what I'm doing now is actually getting on with the immediate job. <laughs> How are you feeling? I, I imagine you're feeling rather shell-shocked. What I'm feeling is that, actually, there is a job to be done, and I think what the public want is to ensure that the government is getting on with that job. This is a government getting on with the job. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of sad no-one's turned up to a dinner party, though. <laughs> <laughs> there was a, a very strange word in there. Did you see that? She said, talent. <laughs> How desperate are you when you reappoint Michael Gove? <laughs> Can you see what Tom Watson said? Is this the deputy leader of the Labour Party? That's, the, that, that's Tom Watson, yes. Tom Watson alleges Gove was brought back on Rupert Murdoch's instructions. He's written a formal letter to Theresa May saying, I'm writing to ask you about any influence Rupert Murdoch may have sought to exert over Cabinet appointments. Specifically, it has been suggested to me that Rupert Murdoch asked you to appoint Gove to the Cabinet. Well, Gove was writing for The Times. And, you know, if you owned the paper, you'd be desperate to get rid of it. <laughs> Is that a professional editor's view you're giving us there? Yeah. Uh, the number of people I've put into the cabinet. Blah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, he sent him... This, Tom Watson sent a letter. That's right. Yes. I, uh, Paul seems to be the only people writing letters still. <laughs> Is that why stuff takes so long to get done? <laughs> Can they not just email? No, it has to be written on vellum. <laughs> what is vellum? Vellum is goat skin. It's like very, very classy Basildon Bond notepaper. <laughs> OK, you've confused me more <laughs> now. Yeah. That, uh... It's like Snapchat with animal skin. <laughs> Uh, Boris Johnson, he's, of course, delighted with Michael Gove's return. Did you see what he said? Was it not Ooh. true? Uh, well, he tweeted, It's a government of all the talents. Welcome back to Michael. <laughs> Which is Boris speak for, I hope you die. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, Angela, you're a big fan of Boris, aren't you? Great fan of Boris. Yes. Well, let's have a look at Angela assessing his credentials just after the referendum campaign. Barney's great, isn't he bouncing around, sort of going to be the next Prime Minister and all of that. And they never actually put him... <coughs> they've just made him Foreign Secretary. <laughs> no. 
I thought there might be lip readers in the audience. I was going to ask you that. What did you say when you turned around? Oh, it's unrepeatable on a family <laughs> So, uh, we saw Theresa May saying she's getting on with her job. Mm. What else does she have to do to convince voters? Oh, she had to sack her advisers. This was a London resident. Let's take a look. Theresa May said on the steps of Downing Street when she became Prime Minister, she talked about the underprivileged, the, the, those who had a sense of burning injustice. Has Theresa May ever been to Aldi? Has she ever been Lidl? <laughs> In her life? Let's be real. If she could tell me what Lidl looks like from the inside, I'll listen to what Theresa May's got to say. <laughs> I think, I think it's a fair point. Angela, have you, have you been inside Little? Yeah. Can, can you tell us what it looks like? Well, it's a supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 kind, what kind of supermarket? Tell us. What, you know. Well, it's a kind of Italian, isn't it? Italian or Spanish. Oh. <laughs> I think it's German, isn't it? German. Yeah. German, German yeah. supermarket. I think if I saw Theresa May in Little, I'd feel less confident about the country. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the whole Conservative election campaign, was it a debacle, a catast <laughs> catastrophe, <laughs> or a, a shambles? A catastrophe. Oh, there was like a lot it. of tosses involved. <laughs> <laughs> all of those things. All of those? Absolutely all. It was the worst election campaign I think I've ever seen anybody run. What, including yours Thank to challenge goodness. Jeremy? Thank goodness. <laughs> Him, fair, mine didn't last as long as this did. No, no, you, you And you... I didn't I didn't have Linton Crosby's extremely expensive advice. No, no, clearly. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so were you thrilled when the exit poll came out? Did you think, yes, Jeremy, you proved me absolutely wrong? Well <laughs> done. I was thrilled. I think everybody was astonished on all sides. And I thought, well, I think I'll get down to the count and see what's going on. Where where were you? <laughs> <laughs> well, normally at the end of an election campaign you dash home because you've been out up for 17 hours, you've knocked on as many doors as you can, you're absolutely exhausted, you go home, you have a quick bath, you get your suit on, you turn on the telly to see what the exit poll is so you can see what the result's actually going to be and then you digest that for a bit and then you go to your own count to see what's happening. How do you have a quick bath? Well, you have to. <laughs> you have a <laughs> you make... <laughs> <laughs> if, the rest I understood, but the quick. <laughs> <laughs> How have the Europeans reacted to the confusion and uncertainty in Britain? Hasn't Macron offered to let us back in? He's, he said, you, we could just drop it, just drop it all now. <laughs> we, feel, we all feel so sorry for you. <laughs> well, we'll have to wait and see what this strong and stable government we've got that's <clears throat> just about to start the Brexit negotiations next week. Is yes. going to do, but let's face it, she's taken over a week to try to negotiate with 10 DUP members. <laughs> <laughs> and they all speak English. <laughs> yeah. Did anyone see how, um, how Macron tricked Theresa May into looking a bit stupid this week? Yeah, the Mexican wave thing yeah. at the France-England game. Yeah, he, he lured her into a Mexican wave. Ah. Yes. <laughs> Let's have a look. Mm. <laughs> France, uh, France beat England 3-2 that game, but uh, Jeremy Corbyn is claiming it, claiming it as a great victory. For, uh... <laughs> uh, Macron did also say to Theresa May that the door is always open. The dirty devil. She's in the age range, though, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is <laughs> Theresa May remaining in number 10, with her job being to unite the country. It's not clear to the Conservatives how Labour managed to get so many young people to vote for them, an issue which will be thoroughly examined by the 1922 committee. <laughs> <laughs> According to The Guardian, at the first meeting of Labour MPs since the election, Jeremy Corbyn was greeted with cheers, a 45-second ovation and desk-banging, which no-one in Labour has done since John Prescott <laughs> and his secretary. <laughs> with an eye to future success, Jeremy Corbyn has carried out his important reshuffle. There were few surprises, although he did move the marrows to a sunnier patch, plant more tomatoes and scatter some slug pellets. <laughs> Someone from the allotment. <laughs>
Jeremy will be back on Tuesday. <laughs> Paul and Angela, take a look at this. Yes. Yes, this is a man with the ear trumpet. Uh, fondue. Fondue. Cheese. 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 Scientists have discovered that cheese can help restore hearing. That's what the theory is. And so the US Army are testing this by force feeding some of their troops Stilton and Cheddar to see whether it mitigates the hearing loss from standing next to those very loud explosions that you tend to get when you're in the armed forces. Does it work? Don't know, they're testing it. <laughs> <laughs> I think in fact, they're just testing everything <clears throat> alphabetically. <laughs> they're now on cheese, next week will be Dalmatians. <laughs> How does cheese cure deafness? What's the. Well, What's has the... it been certain that it does? There's, a, there's, a, there's some kind of enzyme or some thing in cheese that helps. You're such an expert on this. How do you know all this? <laughs> it's when you've been a minister and an MP for cheese. so long. <laughs> <laughs> I was the minister for allotments once, oh, yeah, actually. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> you, you, you pick up vast amounts of irrelevant information. Hang on, did you think about you were minister for allotments? Yep. Really? What, what did that involve doing? Winning World War II. <laughs> <laughs> So how does cheese cure deafness? Cheese contains a chemical compound which mm. seems to protect against and even reverse the damage to nerve yeah. cells wow. in the ear caused by loud noises, apparently. Um, but what's the problem with, uh, with this cure? There is, there is a problem with it. You have to eat a lot of cheese. A hell of a lot of cheese. That's absolutely right. You do have to eat a lot of it to do any good. About five pounds of cheese, in fact. A day or an hour. <laughs> well, you tell me. You were Minister of Cheese or whatever it was at some point. <laughs> but this would suggest no-one in France is deaf. <laughs> Which I'm not, I'm not sure is true. Uh, now, another politician who used to be interested in cheese was former Minister <laughs> for the Environment Secretary, former Justice Secretary, now Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Liz Truss. Yes. Let's remind <laughs> ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> that speech. We import two-thirds of our cheese. That is a disgrace. <laughs> It's like Morecambe and Wise, I just want it on all the time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that cheese may improve your hearing. As part of the experiment, American soldiers are going to be supplied with large chunks of parmesan. That's one way to make America great again. <laughs> <laughs> Also this week, the inventor of the Hawaiian pizza has died. It was a very emotionally charged funeral. Papa John was crying his eyes out, and as always, sloppy Giuseppe was a complete mess. <laughs> and so to round two, the picture spin quiz. Fingers right. on buzzers, teams. <laughs> this is um, Donald Trump's cabinet meeting in which he's sort of instructed them all to praise him one by one <laughs> and say what a great job he's doing. It's the eeriest thing you've ever seen. It's really gross. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's look. Mr. President, um, I have uh, privilege to be here, uh, deeply honoured, and I want to thank you for keeping your commitment to the American workers. I want to thank you for getting this country moving uh, again and also working again. We thank you for the opportunity and the blessing that you've given us to serve your agenda. Thank you, Mr. President. It was a great honor traveling with you around the country for the last year, and an even greater honor to be here serving in your cabinet. It's like, it's like everyone's made Donald cry at his birthday party, <laughs> and their parents have forced him to sit down and say sorry. <laughs> Do you think they're watching that in North Korea, gang? Oh, that's a bit sycophantic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's been the latest development in the Russia inquiry regarding Trump? They're getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> step by step, the whiff of Trump is in the air. As his minions are slowly pushed aside, they will find one very sad fuckwit on a golden throne. <laughs> crying at images of himself <laughs> as he realises the world has completely misunderstood him. <laughs> That's that exactly the right question? answer. Well done. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what's going to happen. Donald Trump is to be probed. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I hope for... they have a running start, whoever does it. <laughs> 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 yes, for uh, obstruction for justice is what they, what yeah. they, call, what they call it. Uh, finally, yet another leader of a country has been openly mocking Donald Trump. Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull. Mm. What's he been doing? He did a sort of impression of him. Mm. He didn't know he was being filmed. 
he did an impression of Donald Trump and everyone laughed and now he's in trouble? Come yes. Uh, he, he did an impression of, the, of the, the summit, but he did it at a meeting full of journalists. <laughs> <laughs> Suggests he hasn't been Prime Minister very long. Um, oh, he's very proud of his impression. Indeed. <laughs> Wants to get it out <laughs> there. Yeah. Wants to get it out there. Shall we take a look? Yeah, go on then. Donald and I, we are winning and winning in the polls. <laughs> we are winning so much. <laughs> Not the fake polls. You see, that's a straightforward libel. <laughs> yes, this is another event-filled week for Donald Trump and his family. According to The Sun, Donald Trump convened a meeting in which his entire cabinet had to spend 11 minutes praising him. It's what commonly known in the White House as orange-nosing. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Um, this is wildlife <laughs> documentary. Uh, this is iguana running away from snakes, and uh, it was a very uh, brilliantly uh, photographed bit of footage. And you've got to spend hours, months, weekends, days, forever trying to get this stuff. And somebody complained because there's a, there's a cutaway to another iguana, uh, a, a sort of close-up thing, and they said, oh, this is cheating somehow, as if you can make an iguana. Uh, sorry, love, we missed that. Can we do it again? <laughs> so, um, so I don't understand why people are confused about how films are made. There's, there's a stunt double iguana, is that what No. <laughs> oh, there wasn't. Oh, OK. And that's why I didn't use the word stunt double iguana. <laughs> It was one iguana film being chased by snakes, and then they had a, a, perhaps a close-up of an iguana looking happy, and that was another iguana. But it was one iguana... <laughs> I'm not the only one that finds yeah, it incredibly simple to understand. <laughs> <laughs> We've got an iguana now, but that one's not the same one. Bin it! <laughs> How could they it, it, tell it wasn't the same iguana? Well, because, I don't know, maybe it had a hat on or something, I don't know. <laughs> Up the gunners, I don't know, he had a bag, <laughs> I don't know. Is, is it true, Arsene Wenger's leaving? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I, I think it was, it was a protest registered by the snakes. Yeah. Because um, <laughs> they're shown in this film to be incompetent. Very poor light. There are hundreds of them yes. chasing one baby iguana and yeah. they're so useless they don't get anywhere yeah. near him. Yeah. Um, and the iguana escapes and I think they protested, saying, it's rigged. <laughs> the footage is completely faked. We won the encounter. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, David Attenborough really should just resign. <laughs> Can we see the footage? It's so good. Yeah, it's, good. it's great. I mean, it's a fantastic piece of film. You want, you want to see the, the fakery row to do the yeah. scene involving the uh, lizard and the snake? Yeah. Okay, let's, let's have a look. <laughs> I'd like to say I'm proud of the part I unconsciously played in the setup of that joke. <laughs> Now, see, one of the must-see moments at last year's BAFTAs, yeah. what did it beat? It beat Ed Ball's dancing. Yes. Now, that was faked, cos he, <laughs> he had magnets on his feet and there was somebody underneath the floor <laughs> moving them like that. <laughs> uh, that's right, it was yeah. uh, Ed Ball's Gangnam-style dance. Uh, now, this is probably going to annoy Paul even more, <laughs> um, but this isn't the first time the BBC's been accused of faking footage. Frozen Planet showed footage of newborn polar bears, which turned out to be in an animal park. You know the Teletubbies aren't real? <laughs> there's, there's tiny versions of the same thing inside the costumes. They weren't tall enough now for Now you're just being silly. Exactly. Yeah, I'm sorry, I, they you are You were doing real. so well up I until know, that I, point. I just lost it, I got angry, I started <laughs> lashing out. Yeah. <laughs> this is the shock news that the iguana versus snake scene in Planet Earth 2 might have been faked. I don't see what all the fuss is about. With the BBC filming several iguanas, I mean, they've used at least two different Attenboroughs over the years and no-one's ever complained. <laughs> Now for the missing words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Toastmaster, the magazine for public speakers. <laughs> and we start with, what are the new craze for the summer? Elections. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is hairy chest swimming costumes. Let's take a look. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> 
I got one of them for Christmas. <laughs> Next, what is one of the phrases that sabotages <laughs> success? I am a failure. <laughs> we use more than one iguana. <laughs> Strong and stable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Michael Gove. <laughs> well, the answer is, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> Next, uh, what is the best thing since sliced bread? Diced bread? <laughs> uh, sliced bread is the best thing since sliced bread, apparently. Yes, that's true. Scientists have conclusively proved there's no difference between white and brown. But you try telling that to you, Kip. Uh, next, <laughs> the world's most luxurious dog kennels have what? Humans that the dogs can keep as pets. <laughs> <laughs> now, the answer is aircon and a conference calling system. <laughs> this is a new designer dog house that costs up to £150,000. There are various models on offer, including this Roman one. What? <laughs> Which, as you can see, has four outside urinals. <laughs> Uh, next, I learned the hard way during a recent speech that it is what? Pronounced quinoa, not quinoa. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible to talk while up to your eyes in barbiturates. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you know differently, of course. <laughs> the answer? Better to be behind mm. the lectern. Uh, next up, what is the weirdest mascot ever seen? Is it Melania? <laughs> <laughs> The uh, mysterious fish oh. is the weirdest mascot ever seen. Oh. A Japanese baseball team this week unveiled their new mascot. Let's have a look at it. <laughs> and finally, woman sculpts hedge to look like what? A slightly smaller hedge. <laughs> Basil brush. We'll get there Butchers, eventually. Butchers, garlic. We'll get there. <laughs> you, just, you just keep going. Fruit juice, fruit juice, barley. No, a bit more. <laughs> uh, it's a person related to her. Her husband. Ah, oh, close, I'll give you. It's her son's face. Let's have a look at her son. Yeah, yeah. that's fair enough. Yeah, and now <laughs> let's have a look at her hedge. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's pretty good. The hedges were sculpted by Michelle Foley, who created likenesses of her partner, Andrew, and her 21-year-old son, Brennan. According to The Sun, Brennan's bush can be seen from the street. <laughs> Draw your curtains, mate! <laughs> so, the final scores are... It's four points to Ian and Phil, and five to Paul and Angela. Oh, well done. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Phil Wang, Paul Merton and Angela Eagle, and I leave you with news that at a secret research lab, as two government visitors are shown a new deadly and completely undetectable poison, they're both struck by the same tempting thought. <laughs> After Tim Farron's resignation leaves a vacancy at the top of the party, the Lib Dems' most qualified candidate puts themselves forward. <laughs> And having been praised effusively by his cabinet, Donald Trump fails to receive similar respect from his motorcycle escort. <laughs> Good night. Many voices of the dead ringers are back in a brand new series. Head to the Radio 4 website to listen in now. Here on BBC One Next, auditions begin for the Brimlington Hospital charity single. Sue is in her chair, swivelling element.